Welcome to Books on Point. In his debut book titled Nuts and Bolts, Dr. McLean Sabanda provides a perspective on challenges faced by leaders overseeing a turnaround in any organization and the thought processes behind innovation initiatives that yielded value. The reader is provided with insights on innovation and entrepreneurship for Africa's development through a narrative of Dr. Sabanda's seven years of repositioning Sub-Saharan Africa's first internationally recognized science and technology park the innovation hub he joins us live uh, to take us through uh, the aspects of his uh, debut book uh, dr. Siwanda thank you so much for your time uh, thank you very much, Anastasia, and thank you very much for having me on your show. So, I mean, let's go through, you know, what inspired you to write this particular book and why now? So, uh, you know, from the book, you can see that I spent, I started off with the Innovation Hub in 2011 and uh, left uh, in 2018, but I've been in innovation in South Africa since uh, 2004. Um, and you know, during the lockdown, at the beginning of the lockdown, I started to reflect uh, on a number of things uh, as I go around uh, the country and also the continent where I lecture. Uh, people keep on, uh, you know, asking about the story of the Innovation Hub uh, and the great work that has been done and the stories of entrepreneurs and so forth. Um, and so I thought, well, it's actually best to actually capture this uh, from my own perspective from my own eyes and experience, but also integrated with other people's experiences, people that have actually walked the journey. So I think the timing is actually right because Africa is talking about the African continental free trade uh, in an in a area uh, and uh, innovation and entrepreneurship are quite key. Uh, and so I hope that the book will add value uh, to, uh, you know, to, to developing a prosperous uh, Africa. So take me through the work that went into repositioning the Innovation Hub. Yeah, so when I started in uh, 2011, uh, I was asked uh, to focus on innovation. And, and what I was told was that uh, the organization was a, a real estate uh, company, uh, but it was actually set up to actually focus really on innovation and position counting as being the premier uh, development hub uh, in the continent. So, you know, going in, it was a small organization with only about 20 people. Uh, there were less than 10 entrepreneurs in the incubation program. We were only focusing on ICT at the time. Um, and, you know, sitting with the team, we looked at this and said, what are the sectors that are going to be important uh, in the future? Uh, and we decided that there were, in essence, three broad sectors, ICT, uh, and the second one being bioeconomy as well as a green economy. Uh, we also looked at the capacity within the organization. There was not even one person with a science or engineering degree at the Innovation Hub at the time. Uh, previously, there had been the CEOs that uh, had that qualification. So I went to the board and requested that we bring on board capacity subject matter experts that would then help with the repositioning of the innovation hub. Uh, and we had to win back the trust of the tenants. Uh, tenancy had gone down, and as one, when one reads through the book, you see that the tenancy had gone down to almost 50%. So we had to do two things in essence. One, focus on a new uh, mission or mandate, which is innovation. But secondly, uh, also maintain the real estate business uh, that we had. One of the things the Innovation Hub did do was establish the bioeconomy cluster. What was the main reason for doing it? So when one looks at what the South African government has invested in over the, uh, let's say, you know, since 1994, uh, the Department of Science, uh, Technology and now Innovation has invested significantly in biotechnology. So from about 2001 uh, to, you know, to present, there's a lot of money that has gone in into the bioeconomy uh, in a sector. But also the bioeconomy sector accounts for over 10% of GDP, whether it's manufacturing or it's, uh, you know, upstream agriculture, uh, you know, beneficiation, um, you know, agro-processing. Uh, healthcare, uh, you know, biopharmaceuticals, 
that's all uh, in the bioeconomy. Uh, and we looked at this and we realized that there's actually a lot of potential in respect of bioeconomy. But also the bioeconomy sector offers an opportunity to almost uh, you know, spread out, uh, you know, this, or, or at least get rid of this notion that uh, uh, innovation is all about high tech. Uh, because within bioeconomy, you then have uh, also indigenous knowledge systems that come in. So if one looks at a company like Porsche M that, uh, that then takes Marula uh, oil and uh, develops uh, cosmetics, uh, that's all bioeconomy. Uh, so I think, you know, those were the, you know, the main drivers. Uh, and uh, today I'm actually proud to say that I think Houteng has got the biggest bioeconomy cluster in Africa uh, because of the work that was done uh, then setting up the bioeconomy cluster and the biopark. Speaking of the work that was done, um, what has been the impact of establishing the Ekasi Labs in the townships? So that's actually quite an interesting one because when we when I, when we when I started off at the Innovation Hub in 2011, uh, the focus was really on the Science Park, which is you know that particular precinct uh, in Pretoria. But we quickly realized that there's a lot of uh, young people uh, out there in the townships that would want to access the services that the Innovation Hub uh, provided, but they were not able to. Uh, for a number of reasons. One was they needed to catch about two or three taxes to get to the innovation hub, uh, or uh, it was just not accessible. So we decided that it was actually important uh, to take innovation uh, to the people. And that was, in essence, in a, our, our tagline, taking innovation to the people. Uh, we partnered with the city of Tswane uh, to establish the first uh, Ekasi Lab uh, in Harankua. Uh, because we wanted to reproduce, in essence, the environment at the Innovation Hub in the townships. Um, but it is, is a smaller scale where young people can then be able to access that. Um, and by the time I left in 2018, there were over 10 ECASI labs that had been established in Gauteng, and there were over 350 entrepreneurs and startups that were incubated in those ECASI labs. So I think the, con the story and the success of Eka Silet uh, continues up until today. Before I let you go, Dr. Sibanda, what's the one thing you hope readers will get from this book? So I'm hoping, I mean, the, the, the book is written for a number of uh, readers. Uh, firstly, uh, to policymakers. Uh, I believe that the book will assist in terms of understanding what was done at the Innovation Hub, but also there's a whole range of lessons that are included in the book in respect of how one can be able to develop ecosystems uh, and what governments need to do to support uh, initiatives such as the Innovation Hub. And secondly, I think to the entrepreneurs, the book uh, is interweaved with a lot of stories uh, from entrepreneurs that have walked the journey, that have succeeded, and they're sharing their own experiences in terms of what works and what didn't work for them, uh, and also uh, what really one needs to do to be able to succeed. And also to leaders that are repositioning uh, yeah. any organization, uh, the book uh, has got, uh, I, I believe, uh, you know, stories around some of the challenges that one faced. Uh, and, and the moral of uh, the story, you know, for those leaders is that when you are leading a change, a transition, yeah. uh, there will be powers that will oppose you. So you right. have to stay strong and make it count. All right, Dr. Sibanda, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. That is Dr. McLean Sibanda talking to us about his new book titled Nuts and Bolts, looking at the innovation systems uh, in Africa and, of course, talking about the Innovation Hub.